It's time for Fresh Oil with singer-songwriter and pastor Keith Manley, a program designed to minister the gospel of God's grace and to bring fresh oil to the brokenhearted. And now, with today's program, Pastor Keith Manley. Hello, my friend. Welcome to Fresh Oil. I'm your host, Keith Manley. I think we would be safe in saying today that one thing we all have in common is that we all face temptations. Now, the temptations may be different for you than they are for me, but we've all felt the pull of Satan drawing us to what we know is bad for us and harmful for our spiritual walk. Friend, you never become immune from temptation. We deal with it day by day, and I can remember some wise words my pastor told me when I was just a young teenager. He said, Satan has a hook baited with your weakness, and he loves to go fishing. While each of us face different temptations, the source is always the same. Satan, our adversary, goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, therefore... Isn't it amazing how many times the the, the verses we read begin with therefore? I always say when you see therefore, stop and see what it's there for. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall, because no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. I like that, friend. You see, I believe that that two favorite tools in the devil's toolbox are temptation and condemnation. He uses both of these tools to paralyze the child of God, and both of these take place in the mind. First, he uses temptation to make us fall. What is temptation? It's that desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you been there? I think about what Jesus told his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane in Luke 22, verse 40. He said, pray that you may not enter into temptation. See, he, he didn't say pray that you will not be tempted. He said, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Because temptation will come no matter how hard you pray. Even Jesus was tempted. But he responded with God's word. He said, Satan It is written. So we all face temptation, but the choice we make is this. Do we resist or do we give in and fall? Temptation, which is usually Satan speaking in our minds to our flesh, he spends all of his time talking us into sin and failure. And then what happens next? When you give in to temptation, then the second tool he uses is condemnation. Condemnation is the act of declaring something awful or evil laying a heavy moral blame, declaring someone guilty. It's when Satan speaks in your mind and he says, you're not a Christian, look look what you did. Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So condemnation declares you guilty or evil, but God said you don't have to receive that because there is no condemnation because Jesus took your sin and he cast it as far as, as the east is from the west. So not only does Satan tempt you till you fall, but then he condemns you once you do it, and he tells you that your your history, your toast, you're not good anymore. God could never use you. So he kicks you when you're down. Condemnation, again, is Satan speaking in your mind and telling you it's hopeless. He focuses on your failures. Maybe a light just went off and you said, wow, Keith, that's exactly what I've been going through. So many today live a paralyzed life, not because they're bad people, but because they don't understand that God can give us victory through the best tool in God's toolbox, and that's called grace. Grace is what Paul called here the way of escape. He said with every temptation, he'll provide the way of escape so that you'll be able to endure the temptation. Grace is God's ability in you to do for you what you cannot do in yourself. If you haven't un- got a hold of it yet, by now, you'll understand that it's my favorite subject, is grace. You see, the answer to overcoming temptation, it's found in the grace of God. You in yourself are no competition for the devil. You're no match. See, the Bible tells us we're at war with an enemy that's far stronger than we are. 
And he won't stop. He lies. He cheats. He doesn't play fair. And he will set your weakness right in front of you. He'll have a hook baited with your weakness and entice you to fail. But secondly, the good news is we have a Savior who's far stronger than the devil. So we're at war with an enemy who's far stronger than we are. And secondly, we have a Savior who's far stronger than our enemy. And God has given us grace to help us stand. The armor of God he's given us to defeat all the efforts of Satan. We have to renew our minds and be in prayer and be in God's word. Temptation is common to us all. In in, in Corinthians, he told us, no temptation hath overtaken you, but such as is common to man. So temptation is common to all of us. And Paul said here in our text, no temptation has seized you or overtaken you, but such is common to man. Think about it. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, the scripture proves out this point. Abraham lied about his wife. Noah got drunk. David committed adultery and then murder. Jonah rebelled against God. He, he, He ran away from God. Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. John Mark gave up on his commitment to missions. Paul and Barnabas had such sharp dispute that they parted ways. Temptation itself is not sin, but if we give in to it, it'll only drag us down. But it often takes others with us and ends up hurting other people and not just ourselves. Just in case you think you're immune to temptation, The pages of Scripture show us the truth. Temptation is an ever-present factor in the life of every human being throughout history. Adam and Eve, they lived in perfection in the garden. They had it all in paradise. And yet Satan tempted them through the serpent by saying, Did God really say? Joseph was tempted as Satan used Potiphar's wife, who had her eyes set on him as her next conquest. But he fled temptation and left his cloak behind. David, when he was king, at the times when kings should be off to war, he was gazing over the balcony and he saw Bathsheba taking a bath. I always thought she was appropriately named. And he was tempted. He gave in and a pattern of destruction followed that would hurt David and many others along with him. Peter was tempted when Christ was arrested and he denied three times that he even knew Jesus. And yet, he would go out and weep bitterly. And when God chose someone to preach that famous sermon on the day of Pentecost, when the church of Jesus was born, he looked at Peter and he said, I can use someone like him. God told him, Satan has desired Simon to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith might not fail. See, the second thing is temptation is is, is exposure to the possibility of doing the wrong thing. That's what temptation is. It's when you're exposed to the possibility of doing something wrong. James chapter 1 and verse 14 says this, But each one, when he is tempted, by his own evil desire, he's dragged away and enticed. Temptation itself is not sin, but staying there in your mind, that is. Temptation takes place in the mind, and it comes through our senses, what we see, what we smell, what we hear. Satan amplifies our senses to tingle at the very exposure of the possibility of pleasing the flesh through sin. Now, I've had a radical change in my diet the last year and a half, and I'm going to tell you, it's not been easy. I've dropped a lot of weight, but I want to tell you that temptation is just as close away as a piece of chocolate cake to make all the work I've done just go away. And I want you to know something today. I have to make a decision every day that I'm going to eat healthy and not be allow the temptation of the devil to drag me back where I used to be. You know, Corinth was a seaport city, and, and, and as Paul's writing to them about temptation, when you read about this place, sexual sin was rampant in this city, and even the church, to the point of a man was having relations with his stepmother, and some of the church people were approving of it. And Paul wrote to them, and he told them this is wrong. He, he, he said, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you've received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. See, 
Paul was telling the Corinthians there, do like Joseph did and run, flee from sexual immorality. Imagine if Paul were trying to write to us today as temptation is now on steroids with the advent of the internet and the garbage that's available on television today. We have to guard our hearts because out of it proceed the issues of life. Now listen to the first verse I read in our text today. I, w- I want to read it out of the, one of my favorite paraphrases of the Bible. It's called The Message. It says this in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. Don't be so naive and self-confident. You're not exempt. You could fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence. You see, under the law, people felt that they gained self-confidence, but it was really just self-righteousness. They're, they, they are weak, but I'm strong, is what they would say under the law. But under grace, we cultivate God confidence. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I resist the devil, and he must flee from me because God lives in me. Grace. God's ability in me to do for me what I can't do in myself. That's so powerful, friend. God wants you and I to be victorious. God wants you to be a winner. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for you and I. And the Holy Spirit is there cheering us on, convicting us of righteousness, saying, flee from sin, walk in the Spirit so you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And then finally today, I want to look at the second half of verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 10. It said, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. See, I love this about temptation. Temptation is limited, and it's measured by God. God is right there. He's measuring that temptation, not allowing you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. See, Paul is telling us a great truth here. If we all can understand this, we'll see a lot more victories in our life. See, friend, temptation occurs in an environment that is controlled by God. The temptations God allows in your life, they're not more than you can resist. You have the ability through Christ to overcome temptation. And God wants you and I to experience victory. And so he allows the devil to go so far so that we can just see that victory in our life. But we're not to give in to sin. God knows our strengths, but he also knows our limitations. How many times people excuse their sin by saying, wow, it was just more than I could handle. But friend, that's not true. If that was the case, God's word wouldn't be true because he said we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. A wise man once said, the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. See, most people would prefer that life be free from temptation, and then one day we get to heaven and there'll be no devil around. But think about it, friend. You'd never have the ability to demonstrate your great love for Christ by choosing to obey him rather than following the lusts of the flesh. We would be nothing more than robots. So God chooses to let us face limited temptations at times we stumble and fall, but he picks us up again and again and again. And like a child learning to walk, we grow stronger and we see his grace play out in our life and we start gaining victory over the devil. See, the fourth and final point I want to make is the certain escape from temptation. He said, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Often when temptation comes our way, we're caught by surprise, but not God. At the same time, God sees the end of that temptation, and he always provides a way of escape through his wonderful grace. Friend, I believe it's no accident you tuned into the program today. I believe God wanted you to hear this message on overcoming temptation. My prayer today for you, my friend, is that you will walk in the grace of God, and you will resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Thanks for joining me today. Walk in grace. Thanks for joining us today for Fresh Oil with Pastor Keith Manley. Fresh Oil is an outreach of Grace Family Church in Rockford, Illinois, and can be heard each weekday at this same time. You can reach us online at weneedgod.com. Until next time, remember, God's love for you is unconditional. 
He makes His mercies new every morning.